Hi, this is Frankie from About Script, and in this video we're going to be covering how to make a very simple interior scene in Blender. Um, one thing I just need to do quickly is turn on my screen keys. Um, so what we need to do is um, first create a room for our uh, scene to live in. So we're going to add a mesh, which is a cube, go into edit mode and hit GZ1, which will let us uh, scale it and maintain its general shape. So we type this Y. And I'm just using our scale keys, um, SX or SY or Z, to create a nice and simple room. Now we're going to come over here, and I'm just going to cut out this entire wall here just to make it a little easier, and move this to layer 2 by pressing the M key and then clicking the layer, just so we can uh, press shift and click on layer 2 here and toggle it on and off with our main layer set as layer 1. So in order to uh, have a room, we're going to need some add, to add some materials to it. So if we select our top, our, our top and bottom face and then hit uh, 7 on the number pad, we can then press U in edit mode and say project from view bounds. And then come over to our side view here and say U project from view bounds. And pick this face, U project from view bounds. And what that's going to do is if we go into our UV editor, you'll see that each of these faces is just taking up, um, it'll show one material at full, and then we can go in here and scale it or do that in our compositor. So we have to go back and give it some materials, which uh, I will do here. And I'm just going to create a new material called floor. And we're going to give that um, a simple image texture. And I believe I have an image that'll work for this. Say, floors marble. And then if we go into our rendered view, you notice that everything is showing up as that because, because we only have one material. So I'm also going to create walls. And then if I go back into our solid view, I can select these faces and say that these are walls. Hit Control I for invert selection and say everything else is a floor because we're not going to have our ceiling in our view, so it doesn't matter that much. And if we hit render it again, we'll see that the walls just show up as a solid gray color, which is going to be fine for what we're using. We just want to set it all the way to white. You notice that um, our floor is just made up of a few tiles, so the best way to fix that, in my opinion, is to go over here and scale it down, or rather scale it up, to maybe five times the size, which will yield us five times the tiles. We're also going to adjust our lighting a little bit. We're going to push our sun lamp back, which I have in my default scene. And if not, you can just get to that from the add menu. Put that there, and increase its strength to say three. So you want a nice and bright scene. Now we're going to be creating a nice little counter, so let's go and hit uh, Shift S cursor to select it on our bottom floor, and add a cube, and do the same thing that we did for the room, which is hitting GZ1, so that we can very easily scale it on the Z axis. And if we push that all the way back to the end of the room, we'll have a very simple counter, and if we hit Control F, what we can do is hit extrude on this top face just to bring it up a little bit and we're going to scale it out a little bit. Now we're going to use our control R which is our ring select tool. Click once and then push it over to the side so we can have a counter coming out towards uh, the viewer. Make sure that you're selecting on the correct side and just pull this out and we're going to have it come past our camera. Hit RXX when you're in camera view to uh, move the camera view up and down, and we're going to leave it there. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did before with our um, unwrapping. So U, project from view bounds. And I'm using the C tool, which is our circle select, 
I know a lot of people prefer, prefer box select. However, this is my personal workflow. And then we're going to zoom out and do U projection view bounds. So now what we have to do is give this some textures. Now I'm going to be using two different textures. One is going to be for our uh, the top part of our counter, which is also known as a countertop. And we're going to give that a hardwood color. So again, we come over here and we go with this little dropper next to color and say image texture. And I have to open this. So I'm going to go into my texture folder and grab a hardwood. Now I'm just going to invert my selection and add another material, which is going to be an image texture as well. And I already have this wood. It's just going to be a very simple uh, flat wood. And I'm going to assign that here. I forgot to unwrap these side faces. There. Okay. So we have that assigned. And then we just need to assign something to the top part of our counter, which is going to be this one. If you don't assign it, it's not going to be set. Go into our rendered view. We see that that looks pretty nice and it's good enough for this tutorial. We could, you know, of course, adjust the scaling of things later. Now we're, we need to add some detail to our scene. So I'm going to come over here and set this as a collision object so that I can come over here and add a plane if I position it properly. And I'm going to go into edit mode and scale it on the Y axis. Bring that over here and hit control R so that I can take these vertices and just kind of move them around this plane. Um, also, I'm going to move them just a little bit off to this side, a little forward, so that it's not completely even if we were to look up from the top view. Now I'm going to set this to be a cloth and add a subdivision surface modifier with just a pretty low detail of, say, two subdivisions, and set it to simple. Oh, we'll go three just to be extra fancy. And now in our cloth, we're going to say that this is going to be a denim fabric and tell our cloth that it should be colliding with itself instead of just passing through itself. And then what we can do is go forward to say frame 40, our cloth cache, and we're going to be baking all dynamics. Now if you see, the cloth has just kind of fallen like this which looks pretty good for our needs. I'm going to actually go back to our first frame though and select everything and we're going to unwrap it with a the light map pack and then we can give it a nice image texture. Now you notice I use image textures for pretty much everything because it's a great way to add a lot of detail without a lot of work. So now if we go forward to this frame, and we render from the front view, we'll see that we have a cloth on our countertop once everything clears up. So maybe that's a dish rag or something of that sort. Now what we're going to do is be creating a nice little sink. It may sound like a lot of work, but it's actually pretty easy. So we just need to go into Control-R and maybe make it about that big and slide it over to here. And if we select this face on top, make sure it's the face on top, we're going to actually be removing this room so that we can see everything a little better. Although it appears that this room actually ended up on a different level, a different layer. So we're going to say we want everything except that layer. Okay, great. And now we can go to our top view and inset this face. Then we're going to just grab it and pull it down into the object. Scale it in. And now we just have to select these faces around it. So you could go and right click all of them, or we can press Control plus, which will expand our selection one level. 
and then maybe uh, we'll leave it at that. So we're going to create another material and this is one that won't have um, image texture however it's going to be glossy which is a pretty cool effect on its own. We'll make it a little bit darker and increase our roughness just very slightly to 0 0.05 And if we assign this texture, we can now preview it, and it looks pretty shiny and nice. And of course, you can just bring the brightness up a little bit if that's not the color you're going for. So now what we're going to do is add a little faucet thingamajig, which is going to have a radius of 0 0.05, and a depth of a little bit smaller and we're just going to go and stick that on the end there. Now we need to set this to our glossy material so good thing we named it. And we're going to go into edit mode and just add some rings to this. Quite a few rings. Now if I go and select these top vertices here and go into our um, a nice little editing tool. I can just kind of position and tweak these using proportional editing to get a nice little uh, faucet. Now I'm just going to extrude a little bit and I'm going to go out of proportional editing. Shortcut key is O for that and scale this up. I'm not exactly sure what a faucet looks like because I don't have it in front of me, not something you think about every day, and put it down and then extrude and scale it out. So now that we have that, if we go back and look over here, what our idea of a faucet is. And it looks kind of like it, it's not exactly what we were going for, but it's close enough for this video. And for any simple project, we're really just going for the simplest and easiest way to get the best look possible. So now we could add something, say like a toaster. Maybe this is the reason we're doing this, is because we have a nice little toaster that we're making a very accurate 3D model of, and we would like to showcase it. So we pull it in. Now toasters have, have some rounded edges, but not all of them are round. So one way that we can do this is by selecting the edges that we want to be rounded and hit Control B and drag it out. Now if we scroll up on our mouse wheel, we see that we're adding segments to this, which give it a nice rounded effect. So now what we can do is add some rings here. I'm just going to add quite a few of them. And then in the other direction, I'm going to add two rings. And... We're going to go into our top view and scale those on the y-axis, which will just push them out. Now we can select some of our, our top faces here. Say we want these. Make sure it's symmetrical. And we can just extrude these and pull them down into the mesh, which will give us a nice uh, toaster looking thing. Now reusing is very important in Blender. If you don't reuse things, you're going to um, be spending a lot of time. So what I did was I selected my glossy material, and then there's a number over here, which says how many people are using the material. And if you click that, then only we will be using the material, only this one object here. So I want it to be a glossy texture, but I want it to be much lighter and have a roughness of, say, 0.6, which will make it shiny but not reflecting everything directly. You can add some other things like chairs. We can bring back our room here and then render out an image. So very simple. We have a nice little countertop with uh, cabinets. We could create cabinets just by using rings and inset it, just like we did for our faucet or our uh, sink here. You could add some more cloths and things, maybe hanging over the chairs, and you can just expand this indefinitely and create a very complicated scene, possibly some windows with just a glass texture, which is very simple. You just click 
on your material thing and choose glass and the default settings would be okay for a window and we could create some shadows and all sorts of stuff like that but it's all the techniques that we used to make this just more time put into it so that's going to be the end of this video and i hope you enjoy this little um kitchen area here and if you have any requests for anything that i should do in blender any sort of uh, small projects that you'd like me to demonstrate i would be happy to do it so leave a comment and i will see you in the next video